The preseason is over. Let's get ready for the regular season. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs and the Locked On NBA Network. I am your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio, TGIF. Thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. And this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. So the preseason is over. We're going to take a look back at those five games, give our general thoughts about what we saw from the team as a whole, then get into some individual player discussions. And then some thoughts as the regular season is just a few days away where the Spurs will take on the Hornets. Who is helping me do all this today? He is back. He finally had some time for me, everybody. He is Michael Davis <laughs> with San Antonio Sports Star and host of Halftime. He's going to brag about that later on the show. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Mike ESPNSA. Mike, thank you. Thank you for graciously taking time out of your very diva, I mean, a busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to big mm-hmm. time you today. I know, man. Hey, can you believe it? The, the regular seasons are is here already. By it's fast. crazy. It's crazy. And fast. watching the preseason game, the last one against OKC, I'm wondering to myself, is Jeremy Sohan going to be the starting power forward game one? Well, let's, that will receive. Well, let's, dive, well, let's dive into that. Let's start off with some overall thoughts uh, before we do that. The Spurs did finish up the regular, the pre, excuse me, the preseason one and four, uh, losing the last one at home against OKC. And uh, yeah, these games are pretty much meaningless. It's just an idea of where this team is, uh, conditioning wise, and what can we could expect when the games really matter. So, M- Michael, you brought up Sohan. I guess that's a good sign if you're. You, you know, some of those fans that are begging Pop not to stash a, a top 10 pick in Austin, he got the not a starting uh, position back-to-back games. Yeah, it's back-to-back games. And you would think that this is a dress rehearsal for the regular season. So when I saw that lineup, back-to-back games, the same five, you know, Trey Jones, Bissell, Kelvin yeah. Johnson, Sohan, and Pirtle, I was like, well, it looks like it's established. I'd be surprised yep. if it changes between now and Wednesday. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I was very surprised when I saw Sohan's name back in there. Not because I don't think he's not a quality player, but it's like, okay, this is a rookie. Is Pop really going to start a rookie game one of a regular season? It looks like that's the direction he is going to go. And you already see a little bit of the rotation already, especially in the last two, three games. You mentioned the starting five that went back to back. More than likely, that's going to be what Pop trots out against the Hornets. Second thing, too, is it looks like they're trying to really shore up that bench. McDermott is likely to come off that bench. I had pegged him for a starter. Not. Primo seems to be coming off that bench. And then uh, Isaiah Roby come off that bench. It, it, do you agree with that? Do you think Pop should just throw the rookie out there, uh, Sohan, in the starting job? Or do you think McDermott should get it? Because McDermott's been playing great this preseason. Are you, are you trying to win or not? I mean, that's basically it. You know, if you're trying to win right now and try to be as competitive as possible, you know, you start McDermott. He's a veteran presence. He can knock down a three. You know, he's somebody that can play occasional defense. You would want to have that guy out there. It's not a knock on Sohan. It's just that he's not experienced. And Mm. I wonder if he's going to be a deer in headlights when it comes to playing an actual regular season game. I mean, I know he's going to grow into his role. I mean, we saw that with Primo last year. It was one of those things where the game was too fast for him early on. And mm-hmm. now, after a year, it seems like the game is slowing down a bit. So I'm excited about what Primo is going to bring to the table this year. But in taking a look at Sohan and whether or not Sohan should be a starter, it's one of those things where it just shows that if we go in that direction, that this truly is a mm-hmm. rebuild year. Now, you mentioned something on Twitter. You tweeted out there that it looks like this team's going to be scrappy. Yeah. And I can't say that yet, man. You're not there I, yet. I, 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 I think they're there. I think they're going to be a very scrappy team. I think they're going to be that team that's going to just be that gnat on opponent's side, and then they get the blow, the doors blown out uh, of, their, uh, of their house 
like come late third, fourth quarter? No, it, it's kind of hard to say because who do we play in the preseason? We played Orlando, Houston, OKC, Utah. We faced yeah. the bottom dwellers of the NBA during the preseason. So it's kind of hard to see how this team is going to match up in the regular season when they play actually good teams. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, again, you know, if there's a measuring stick to what could possibly be the Spurs season, the preseason showed it because you could see at times this team was out of sorts. The first two preseason games, 20 plus turnovers. I expect that to continue as the season moves on. You see Sohan just missing plays and throwing the ball out of bounds. The Pirtle, the same thing, trying to find somebody throwing the ball out of bounds. There, this is still a work in progress for this team. So, Michael, it, it could be, I mean, I think it is, but it might be very ugly come that first month of the season for the Spurs, huh? Well, because the schedule lines up really, really bad. I mean, you've got, you know, Minnesota with a, with a couple of games. You've got Philadelphia. You've got a lot of really good teams right off the bat. The first two games are going to be potentially winnable. Charlotte, game one, that could yeah. be a potential win for the Spurs. Second game of the season could be a potential win for the Spurs. But after that, you're looking at about 12 to 15 straight games where the Spurs might be 8 to 10 point underdogs in every single game, if not more. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just taking a look at the Spurs roster right now. And you take a look at what they've done over the preseason. There are some positives. I'm not going to be doom and gloom the entire time. There are positives out there. Uh, I really enjoyed... In the last preseason game, I really enjoyed Isaiah Roby. Yeah. Uh, I really liked what he was doing out there. Uh, he didn't play a lot of minutes, but when he was out there, I liked what he was doing. I wonder if he's going to be on the uh, roster when it's all said and done because the Spurs are going to make some cuts. And mm -hmm. I wonder which guys those are going to be, and we're going to find out over the next few days or so. But um, just taking a look at what they were able to do in the final preseason game, the positives are Joshua Primo seems to have figured out the timing yeah. of his play. The game has slowed down for him. And that's a phrase that they use in football. That's a phrase mm -hmm. they use in basketball, where you go from college to the pros, and all of a sudden it's just all whizzing right by you. And Primo seems to have figured out the timing, the rhythm of the game. He had a great game in the final preseason game against OKC. Great game. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was his body control. And that's when you see players take a leap. And we've seen Devin Vassell and Kelvin Johnson uh, have good games in the preseason. Um, it's going to be a long season, but I see positives of it. We need to take some positives out of it throughout all of this because we're not going to rack up a lot of Ws. But if we can see exponential growth from some of these players, and I'm, I'm still puzzled where Jeremy Sohan comes in all of this. Uh, I, wasn't a, uh, I wasn't big on him during the draft process. Right. I want him to do well, so I'm not cheering against him. But it's one of those things where is he going to be a Draymond Green type? Is he going to be somebody where it looks he like that. load up the stat sheet? What's that? It it does look like that. I mean, again, it's hard to really gauge in preseason action, and especially for a player who didn't play at all in Las Vegas in the summer league. But we do have a bit of a sample size, five games. And it looks like he's going to be a utility type player. Look, obviously, you know, he's going to get a big dose of mi minutes. It looks like that. He might, you know, take a sip of coffee out in Austin a few times, but for the most part, he's going to be in San Antonio. But I, I think he, that's what they want him to be. He's made it very clear on draft night, said that he is more of a utility player, that he can do a little bit of everything. Let's just, you, you know what? Let's, let's start talking about individual players. When we get back, we're going to dive into some individual players. I want to continue talking about Sohan and who could possibly be on that cut waiver go to Austin bubble and much, much more with Michael Jimenez of San Antonio Sports Star and host of Halftime. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Bet Online. Look, you want to go to betonline.net. It's your number one source for all your football betting info this season and much, much more. You can find all the latest player development, team matchup news podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. Look, as always, BetOnline, it's your continued source for all your sport wagering information. They got live betting, up-to-minute scores for every single sport out there. You name it, they got it. 
is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Look, you want to go to betonline.net right now. You got yourself a mobile device, a laptop, a computer, your cell phone, your tablet, whatever you have. Go to betonline.net right now. Why? Because that's where the game starts. We're back with Michael Jimenez with San Antonio Sports Star and host of Halftime. And we're looking back at the Spurs preseason play. We're about to dive into some individual player thoughts. Now, we were talking about Sohan right before the break, Michael. And let's just say he, offensively, he's raw. I, I mean, there's no way about it. He is just very raw. But I don't know, understand why Spurs fans are getting all wound up because even in Baylor, he wasn't even known for being some sort of offensive juggernaut. So it seems to me they're going to have to really work with Sohan throughout the season on the offensive. Defensively, I think he's only going to get better, and I think he has a great foundation. Offensively, he looks a little still a work in progress, Michael. Yeah, he knocked down a three-pointer, a clutch one, with about four minutes to go in the game to bring the game within one. Uh, That was nice to see, that he was able to be confident enough to take that shot, and not only take that shot, but actually make it. Um, It's just one of those things when when you think of a top 10 player, you're thinking of a player that's going to be able to do a lot of things on the court. And I have a lot of, you know, friends who are Spurs fans who are like, you know what, maybe he can be a Draymond Green. Maybe he can be a Dennis Rodman. Maybe he can be something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, Draymond Green and Dennis Rodman, to the best of my knowledge, were not drafted in the top 10 of any draft, Mm -hmm. right? So that's why Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit concerned about it all when it's like, okay, where are we going to get for him or from him? I hope it works out, but, you know, we need scoring in this league and we need more scores. And what I don't want is for the Spurs to be going out there four on five offensively uh, because Mm -hmm. Sohan is is not really bringing that. Uh, I know he's not an offensive-minded guy first. He's a defensive-minded guy, but Man, the year, it's the year 2022. It's not the year 1992. And yeah. I hope that he develops some sort of offensive game. And it's going to take some time. But uh, you know, as of right now, I'm, I'm withholding judgment right now as to whether or not this is a good pick or not because it, it has to play out for some time. But at the yeah. same time, I'm, I'm, neither, I'm neither upset by what he's done in the preseason, but I'm also not impressed either. It's just kind of indifferent. Yeah, look, I think a five games in a preseason setting is not enough to make an evaluation slash judgment on Sohan. I feel like you want to say, get back to me after two months into the season. Then we can probably start having a discussion on where he's at because he's going to, and then guess what? He's going to hit the rookie wall soon. So expect Spurs fans to blow up over that. But yeah, it's just a work in progress. Now, another person I want to talk to you about is Doug McDermott. We talked about him in the first segment. But if he's playing like this right now in the preseason, like willing to embrace the, the bench roll, knocking down three-point shots, l- slashing, all the stuff that McDermott did last season before he got injured. Hey, I like it. He meant, you know why? His trade value can you only get higher. What are your thoughts? <laughs> you just stole my thunder right there. He's a pro's pro, man. He is somebody that, uh, thri- that that's going to thrive for a very, very good team. And, you know, he's being a professional mm-hmm. out there. It's kind of weird when Doug McDermott is like one of the oldest players on the roster because he's still a pretty young guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's going to go out there and give it his all. This is not somebody who's going to tank. This is not somebody who's going to refuse to take an open three. He plays his game. He plays it well. He's a good player. Uh, arguably, he's probably one of the Spurs' five best players, but it's just one right. of those things where he, he he's not is, part yeah. of the rebuild. Mm-hmm. No, you're you're right. I, I think he's I, I don't think he's factoring long term into the Spurs rebuild. So I, if he's playing like this in the preseason, yay, let's get his trade value up higher. <laughs> One of my biggest fears during the preseason was this that none of the tradable chips get injured. Your Pertles, your Richardsons, your McDermott's. Every time I saw one of those players hit the floor and I was like, Oh no, no, please don't. Please don't. You know, because the Spurs can use their value. We're talking with Michael Jimenez right here on Lockdown Spurs. He's with San Antonio Sports Star, and we're looking back at the Spurs preseason games and giving our final takeaways uh, from those set of games. Now, Michael, I want to talk to you also about Devin Vassell. Wow. I mean, he's really 
take took his game to another level. He's taking threes. At least he's attempting threes. That's a good sign. He's confident with his shot. Defensively, he's been a disruptor. I like what I've seen out of Devin Vassell. I think he had 20-plus point outings during the preseason. Really looking like he's starting to come into his own in the NBA, Michael. Yeah, someone's got to be the leader of the team. And I think the default for all of us has been saying that it's Kelvin Johnson. Uh, but I've been saying this for the past two years. The highest ceiling of any player on the Spurs roster has been Devin Vassell. Even when DeJounte Murray was on the team, I kind of felt like the highest ceiling belonged to Devin Vassell. I've been a big fan of his ever right. since he was with Florida State. I followed him a lot in college. I was so happy when the Spurs got him in the draft a couple of years ago. But Devin Vassell is just somebody who can bring it on both sides of the floor, offensively and defensively. A little bit strange because in college he was better defensively than he was offensively. I think that switched mm-hmm. a little bit while he's been with the Spurs. He's confident in his three-point shot. I'm confident when he's shooting it. His, his form is really nice. He squares up very well. Mm-hmm. And uh, just defensively, if he can kind of be a little bit more aggressive defensively, uh, hold his ground a little bit more, he's going to be a stud player in the future. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think that he's going to take a leap this year. He took one last year. But I think the big, big leap is going to be not this season, but next season. And when I take a look at what Devin Vassell can do, you know, when he first got drafted, I said best case scenario. I've been saying this for a long time. The best case scenario is that he's 85% of what Kawhi Leonard used to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like what he's doing out there. He's still growing. Uh, Devin Mm -hmm. Vassell is my favorite spur. Keldon Johnson came back from a shoulder injury. And uh, in just his first game in the preseason, 22 points in that first outing, follows that up with another good performance against OKC, uh, looking very strong, still looking like that bull wants to go to the rim. Uh, (laughs) Taking the outside shot, that's good. But in the preseason, he attempted five three-point shots per game. Uh, I like that. I like that he wants to be aggressive on that angle, too. We saw that starting to develop late, well, in the second half of the season last year. Looks like that's continuing. I'm just interested, where do you think he could climb next in his development? Well, if there's anybody who is destined to score 20 points per game for this first team, it's Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin was pretty damn close to it last year, right around 17 points per game. So for him to average three points more with DeJounte no longer there, more shots available, I think it's going to happen. You know, it's, it's one of those things, whether you're a good team or a bad team, someone's going to score 20 points per game. So it's going to be him. I'm happy with the three-point selection. One thing I'll say about his three-point shooting, he did improve last year. I mean, he was Mm -hmm. hovering over 40% most of the year. But beyond that, he doesn't take a bad three-point shot. He doesn't seem to force them. He's Mm -hmm. very selective in what he's doing. So even if he's doing five or six a game, they're very, very selective in how he's shooting the ball. When he's doing it, my problem with him is not outside the arc. It's inside the arc. And can he develop... Mm -hmm. Some sort of finesse game, something where he can, like you, you said, bull in the china shop, right? Can yeah. he get away from that? Because that only works. Uh, so he he far. defaults to that so much. That's just like his default. Like he's just all full steam. I, I would like for him to be more conscious about his shot selection, whether it's to take an outside shot or to make a shot at the rim and go full steam ahead. Uh, so I agree with you. I, I, I like what I see out of KJ. Was just two games, uh, considering that he got injured, but nevertheless, really, really well. Uh, you know, there, there are so many other names we've got to highlight, especially those that seemingly could be on the bubble. We're going to continue our wrap up of the Spurs preseason slate when we get back. We're going to talk about what players could be on the bubble and some uh, final thoughts on some individual players or just the team overall. Uh, as the Spurs get ready for the regular season. So we're talking with Michael Jimenez with San Antonio Sports Star. And he is the host of Halftime. We're back with Michael Jimenez with San Antonio Sports Star, wrapping up the Spurs preseason slate. They finish it up one and four and get ready for the regular season opener against the Hornets in just a few short days, October 19th. It's also Manu Ginobili's re retirement jersey ceremony where they're going to put the Hall of Fame note on his uh, retired jersey. But Jimenez, did you see? Ginobili's jersey was launched into outer space. 
I saw that, and I have no idea what it's all about because I was trying to find stories about it. Yeah, but it was so cool. It was so amazing to see that number twenty out there. The jersey looked autographed. Am I? It was autographed. That? It was. He autographed it. When I know, you know. So, well, I did find out a little bit of the story. Apparently, they used a uh, uh, a very fancy balloon that can reach outer space and then release its payload, which was a jersey. In this case, they head into orbit. And, and it, all it really came down to was just celebrating Manu's Hall of Fame induction. They're still celebrating it over there in Argentina. They, they, they ain't forgetting <laughs> it. So if you want to check that okay, out, it's so on that wasn't side. NASA. That wasn't NASA. That no, was a different that wasn't a NASA. Or... No, that was just, <laughs> I don't know who did it, but it wasn't NASA or the Argentinian Space Association or whatever it is. But you can check that out at kensfight.com slash Spurs right now. Let's go ahead and uh, wrap up uh, the our takeaways from the Spurs preseason play. I want to start off with the bubble players. Uh, one player that looks like he may be out of a Spurs uniform or just buried again in Austin is Joe Wieskamp. Uh, minimal action in the preseason. I don't think he played a, a minute. Or if he did, it may be a couple minutes in that last game against OKC. A deaf three-point shooter, but it looks like he could be on the bubble, Michael. Yeah, he's on the bubble big time and probably on the opposite end of good things. I, I don't see him being long-term with Spurs. I do like his play when he came out of Iowa. You know, six six guy who can knock down some threes. Uh, yeah. But he's destined for the G League all over again. And it's not to yeah. say that he can't bounce back. He's still a very young guy. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those things where I don't think he fits the rotation just yet. I was I was wondering your thoughts on this. The Spurs really gave a lot of minutes to Romeo Langford uh, in the last mm-hmm. two games. Uh, he played actually uh, he played all five regular um, preseason games, and then his minutes spiked in the last two. The Spurs may be looking at him as you know somebody they're going to work with. We forget he I think he was a lottery pick too for Boston. So, yeah, Romeo Langford, I believe yeah. he was like the 14th pick a while back yeah. like at the end of yeah. the lottery. He was the throw yeah. in the Derek White trade. Right. You know? So like, here's Richardson. And oh, by the way, we need some salary filler. Here's Romeo Langford. The weird thing about it is, is that if you go on to those, you know, locked on Celtics type sites where they talk about yeah. this particular trade, I remember months ago going back and reading them, a lot of posts from Celtics fans who were upset that Romeo Langford was part of the yeah. deal. Yeah. They were saying, hey, this is a guy that has skills that they wanted to see developed, that he had shown flashes before his injury. He had shown flashes of doing some pretty special things out there. Um, I'm interested in this because the Spurs picked up his player option. They didn't have mm-hmm. to. They picked it up for a reason. I think they see some lottery talent in him as well. So it's kind of funny that the Spurs have a couple of lottery players from the past, uh, Zach Collins and right. Romeo Langford, who they're just hoping – that that lottery potential comes comes to life. Right. As far as the other two rookies are concerned, uh, Malachi Branham and Blake Wesley, I think it is safe to say they will likely see a lot of time in Austin. Uh, you saw Blake Wesley really kind of struggle from the line, or from the field, excuse me, uh, during these uh, preseason games. He, his minutes started to trickle down as the preseason moved on. Malachi maybe could potentially get some NBA minutes more than Blake. Malachi looked like he was instant offense sometimes. He had like seven points in X amount of minutes, like when, in his preseason debut, 10 points in one game. Uh, Malachi looks like the more NBA ready, quote unquote, of the three rookies. So I'll be interested in that. But I, I think it's safe to say, Michael, that expect Blake and Malachi to spend a, a good chunk of time in Austin. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. And when it comes to Malachi, you say that he's more NBA ready. Um, you know, a lot of the mock drafts had him going around 16. Spurs got him at 20. Uh, Malachi Branham is somebody, like you said, instant offense. I mean, it's just, he's somebody, back in the day, we used to call them, you know, the microwave, like Vinny Johnson back in the day with the Pistons. Just somebody who can come in and get seven, eight, nine points in a quarter and then just get back to the bench. Uh, he could be somebody better than that as time goes on beyond a bench player. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's going to have to prove a lot in Austin right now because there's only so many spots available on the varsity squad and Malachi right. and, and, uh, is, is going to, and Blake Wesley are going to be yeah. there in Austin together. Uh, Wesley looked really good in Las Vegas. Yeah. He, he balled out for a couple of games in Vegas out there, but when it comes to the big league settings, you know, when it comes to playing in an actual stadium that holds 18,000 mm-hmm. people, 
it was a little bit much for him early on, but I have confidence in the guy. He's still super young. You know, mm-hmm. so it's going to yeah. be a while before we know what these guys are capable of, but they have raw talent. They do. They do. You know, you expect your Alizé Johnsons to be in Austin, perhaps your Jordan Halls. One of these, someone's, someone's going to get cut. The roster's at 20 right now. So there's <laughs> going to be cuts coming soon. But so you can, you know, the ones that are on that bubble are your, like I said, Alizé Johnson, your Jordan Halls, your, your uh, Wies Camps. So one of those three guys are probably going to get cut. But the guy that's kind of an outlier in all this, we haven't talked about him, is Keita Bates Diop. Where do you see him factoring into next season? You know, just when I wrote him off for dead, he goes out and goes four for five from three. I know. You know just, just when I wrote him off and I was like, oh, my God, he had to go do that. He had to go show that he improved his three-point shooting. Um, it's kind of weird because I don't know exactly what position this guy is. The program says he's a small forward, but they play him as though he's a four. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of positionless basketball going on, but he seems to be out of position, or I hate to use the word tweener, but he's kind of a tweener with what they try to make him be. Um, he's probably on the outside looking in, but, you know, it's somebody that I don't think he has a very high ceiling, uh, <laughs> but his floor looks very good, though. We know what to expect from him if he was right. to be kept on the roster. Mm-hmm. He's just not going to excel. He's just going to hold his own. Uh, but I think he's probably one of these ones on the outside looking in. So you're putting him on the bubble too. Yeah. 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 I, I want him to stick around. I think there's something that I think he fits today's modern NBA at that forward spot, whatever it is. And he can do it. I mean, look, at least through four games uh, prior to the OKC game, 18 minutes a game, close to seven points per game. You know, being productive out there, it wasn't like he's just flopping around everywhere, you know, shot about, you know, his shot needed to work, but, you know, you know, 30% from the field, again, through four games prior to OKC uh, game, a 1.3 assists and 3.5 rebounds. So he does stuff out there. It's just how does he fit in uh, is going to be seen. So, yeah, I mean, he kind of does what Sohan does. Right. He kind of does what Sohan does. Uh, your Dominic Barlow, expect him to be on the bubble too. Austin or get cut, one of those guys. But overall, do you, based on what you saw in the preseason, and I know it's not that great of a sample size and it's kind of wonky because, you know, the injuries of Primo and KJ, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But do you think this team could live up to that whole they're going to be the worst team in the NBA next season vibe? Well, I mean, it's kind of hard to say that they're going to do that because. You know, they have Pop as head coach, and Pop is the greatest of all time at head coaching. Um, I don't think that he's the coach that I would want for a rebuild, but because you have that brain trust that's there, it's going to be difficult for the Spurs to be the worst team in the mm-hmm. NBA. The problem for the Spurs right now is that they can actually get better but actually lose more games. And the reason for that is because the West has got so deep and so strong. Teams like New Orleans have gotten better. And, you know, the Lakers are going to be better this year than they were last. And, you know, we're going to be lapped by a lot of teams. And and I'm thinking about it, like, which teams are we actually better than in the West? You might argue OKC. You might argue Houston. You might argue Portland. But every single one of those teams has a player that's better than our best player. And that's the difficult situation that we have going on. How big of a leap is Devin Vassell going to be making this upcoming season? I mean, mm-hmm. if he balls out, he becomes a 23, 24 point per game guy, even on a bad team. I mean, that is something significant there. And I think it's going to go mm-hmm. based on how Devin Vassell goes, not how Kelvin goes or Jakob goes. I think Devin Vassell's performance, his ability to grow as a player, as a professional, as young as he is, I think that's going to determine a lot about the Spurs' trajectory, not only this season, but next season. Now, the weird thing about it is is Mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter if you have the worst record, the second worst record, or the third worst record. If those three teams, whoever those three teams will be, have the same exact odds to win the lottery, the same exact odds Mm -hmm. to, to be number two in the lottery the same exact odds to be number three. So you don't have to finish with the worst record to have the best chance at getting a Wemby 
or get a Scoot Henderson or anybody like that. Uh, and I know a lot of Spurs fans right now don't want to hear that. But, man, we need to rebuild. And, you know, I saw mm-hmm. an article uh, earlier talking about the, the best core, young core players for every single team in the NBA. They ranked them 1 through 30, whatever. Uh, you know, the Lakers right. being second worst. And they define the core, a young core as somebody who's 25 or younger. Mm-hmm. And this was the ringer.com, by the way. And they ranked the Spurs as having the 19th best young core. The best core is being Memphis, Cleveland, you know, right. being teams like that, Orlando. But when you take a look at those teams, they all have something in common. They were either one, two, or three in the draft. Or they moved mm-hmm. up to the number three spot in the draft, which is the case of Dallas when they traded Trey Young for, uh, when they traded Trey Young for, uh, for um, Luka. So, right. you know, the Spurs, if the Spurs want to be relevant again, I hate to say this, Spurs fans, we need more talent. And we can only yeah. develop Keldon so much. We can only develop Devin Vassell so much. But we need to have that superstar there. And if you have faith that that's going to be Devin Vassell or it's going to be Keldon Johnson, have that faith. Well, in all honesty, chances are they're going to be the number two or three guy on a good team later on in the future. Absolutely. I, I think Popovich and even Vassell even said it, too, in one of the earlier preseason games where he said that this team doesn't have a KD at Durant. He literally said right. that. So they, they acknowledge it, that this team is lacking that mega star. Look, I hope, excuse me, I hope Devin gets better and I hope Kelton and Jakob and Roby, everybody, Sohan gets better as the season gets on. But uh, the, the team is going to get exploited because of that. They don't have that go-to mega star to carry them. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We're I, mean, I think the closest players. we had. Or, yeah, I mean, I think I said on the last episode of Lockdown Spurs, uh, on a fan episode, I, I told the fan that as of right now, there's still nobody that's untouchable on this squad. There's nobody still untouchable. If you thought DeJounte was untouchable, then this crop should tell you they're really not untouchable. So. If there was uh, anybody that is, meet, and, 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 and it's not to say that they're untouchable, but probably the least touchable would be uh, Devin Vassell. Uh, but, you know, yeah. the Spurs are going to be trading people. <laughs> we're we're going to be scrapping yeah. our, our team for parts down the road. We did it last year with Thad Young and Derek White and getting rid of DeJounte Murray. We're going to do that again. Uh, I'll, I'd be surprised mm-hmm. if Yaka Pertl finishes the season in silver and black. I'd be surprised if Josh Richardson finishes right. the season with I'm the Spurs. Right with and the you. same goes mm-hmm. with Doug McDermott. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this team is still a... Is it, not only is the team player wise a work in progress, the the rebuild is still a work in progress. They're not just going to sit on their laurels and be okay. Let's wait until we get Wimby. No, if they can make a move right now to help them, you know, add more pieces to a rebuild or more draft picks, and I think they'll do it. Look how aggressive Brian Wright has been. That will continue. By the way, speaking of Jakob, interesting. When I thought I I couldn't find a, a way where he can improve. I said, what more can he do? What more can he do? He, you know, unless he starts knocking out threes. Actually, he did find a way to improve. He led the team in assist per game during the preseason. <laughs> so there you have it, Jakob. Way to go. Uh, he was averaging a uh, little over three assists per game, about 3.3, 3.5. So good who job, Jakob. Who do you think the best player on this team is? If you don't mind me asking, who do you think the best player on this team is? I'm going to go with Sell. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna go. I agree, but what's what's odd yeah. about it is is that Jakob's probably third. He's probably what third? You think he's third on that I list? Third might be second. You know what? I'm gonna steal this topic for another lockdown Spurs down the road. Maybe we'll give this one to uh, Pledger because remember he got upset that you stole one of his ideas and then he put it out oh, there. Oh yeah, in the he accuses me Twitter. of big time. He accuses he accused yeah, me yeah, of yeah. Stealing <laughs> topics. Stealing topics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stealing topics. Yeah, so we'll flip. We'll give you one pleasure now. We'll talk about that next time on Locked on <laughs> Spurs. But overall, yes, Spurs fans, uh, the regular season's here. Uh, will it be a tank season? All signs are pointing to that. We shall see. But, Michael, it's time for you to brag about halftime. What's going on over there at the Star? Well, you know, today is my one-year anniversary of hosting halftime for the very Yay. first time. So, Way to go. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how I'm going to celebrate today. I really don't. Uh, because I was talking to Rob Thompson, who's our fearless leader, 
uh, at, at San Antonio Sports Star. And he says, well, technically, Jimenez, that was your first day. But your first day truly on the job was in November because that's when we gave you the show. So I filled in on the, for the first time one year ago today. So I'm excited to celebrate that later on. on we'll just have two time. birthdays then. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like uh, the, you know, the, the day that they, uh, you know, gave me the engagement ring and the day they married me, I suppose. But, um, no, it, it's fun. Halftime is uh, continuing to evolve. You know, we talk a lot of sports, but we also talk a lot about music and streaming and pop culture and nostalgic things. Uh, I have yet to review Transformers. Don't do it. I'm starting to resurrect that idea. No. Start to think about it. Please don't. Because you know why? No, and I know why. You know know why? You know why? Michael, there's going to be a scene that's going to kill. After one year of halftime. Yeah. I uh, have a little bit more confidence to look at people and say, I don't care what you think if I like something or not. Uh, You know what? You know why I'm nervous? (laughs) It's because there's going to be a particular scene that is very cringeworthy and it might kill it for you. And I, I fear that you will base your decision on this one particular scene instead of seeing the overall picture. And I've already seen half of it, man. I've already I, well, you're not to the cringe part yet. It's in, it's like two thirds in, right before the final act. <laughs> no, so, but we do I, move the reviews on Wednesdays, and it's it's a fun show. Twelve to two, ninety four point one FM, and uh, we're also on SASportsStar.com. Hey, sure to follow uh, Michael on Twitter at Mike ESPN SA. Do it right now, especially with the, the Spurs season starting. You really want to give him a follow because, boy, does he have hot takes when it comes to silver and black. Subscribe to Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, YouTube, the Kins 5 Plus app. And we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Second listen, go check out the Ultimate Pro Basketball Preview 2022. It's a six-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NBA season. We've got local team experts, NBA insiders, the Locked On Podcast Network, and Odyssey combining like Devastator and Transformers into one ultimate NBA preview. You want to search for the ultimate pro NBA preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. So for Michael, he better not review Transformers 1986. He meant as I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock in this episode of Locked On Spurs. Taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top Leave a legacy If I got something to say You better let me speak